Hi, my name is Alex, and in this video I'm going to provide an introduction overview to the United Theory of Adoption and Use of Technology, otherwise known as UTAUT. I'll also discuss UTAUT2, which is the successor to the original model. Both UTAUT and UTAUT2 are technology adoption models. Technology adoption models are meant to help explain why or why not individuals and or organizations choose to adopt and implement new technologies. So here's what we're going to cover today. We'll discuss what technology adoption models are and why we need them. I'll provide an overview of UTAUT and UTAUT2. And finally, we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each model. So what do we mean when we talk about technology adoption models? Why are they useful? To some extent, when we're talking about technology adoption models, we're really talking about how people adapt to change. For example, Eli's Conditions of Change model focuses on the impact of environmental factors on the extent which members of a social system were psychologically ready to consider change. As Straub has noted, what we're trying to understand is why does one individual choose to adopt a technology while another resists? What is the influence of social context on the decision to adopt? These questions are addressed in the context of adoption and diffusion theories. Things like Eli's Conditions of Change or UTAUT could be classified as adoption diffusion theories. Adoption diffusion theories refer to the process involving the spread of a new idea over time. The adoption process refers to the individual's decision whether to integrate an innovation into his or her life. Diffusion describes a collective ado adoption process over time. So what is the united theory of adoption and use of technology? What makes it different than some other adoption diffusion models? UTAUT was not created by instructional designers. In fact, it comes from the fields of computer science and information systems. It was first introduced in a 2003 paper by Venkatesh and co-authors. And it's sometimes associated with a previous change adoption model, the technology acceptance model. The TAM framework had many strengths, but it did not take into account things like prior experience, age, and gender things that are incorporated into UTAUT. In addition, UTAUT is a unified theory. It incorporates eight influential acceptance models. Vinkatesh and other co-authors incorporated the following eight models into UTAUT. Theory of Reasoned Action, TAM, the Motivational Model, the Theory of Planned Behavior, the Planned Behavior slash Technology Acceptance Model, the model of PC utilization, the innovation diffusion theory, and social cognitive theory. Now let's get into specifics, the actual nuts and bolts of the model. The UTAUT model has four core determinants of usage and intention, including performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence, and facilitating conditions. It includes four moderators of key relationships gender, age, experience, and voluntariness of use. UTAUT's creators believe that the following four determinants and moderators influenced people's willingness to accept technological change. Performance expectancy is the degree to which the technology is perceived to be useful. Effort expectancy is the degree to which using the technology is perceived to be easy to use. Social influence is the degree to which using the technology is appreciated in the social network important to the individual. Facilitating conditions are the degree to which the individual believes to be in possession of the resources to use the technology. So that's fairly straightforward, right? Finally, there are moderators that will influence each individual adopter, gender, age, experience, and voluntariness of use, which basically means is the person being forced to use this technology or do they have a choice? So what is UTAUT2? Simply put, it's an iteration on the original UTAUT, 
meant to address some of its perceived shortcomings. For example, there have been doubts about UTAUT's ability to explain individual technology acceptance decisions. UTAUT2 hopefully provides a solution to that problem. Nordoff et al. explored some of the additions. UTAUT2 posits that in addition to the UTAUT constructs, the intention to use technology is influenced by hedonic motivation, i.e. degree to which the technology is perceived to be enjoyable. Price value, i.e. cognitive trade-off between perceived benefits and monetary cost of technology value, and habit, i.e. defined as the passage of time from the initial technology usage. And here you'll see a visual representation of UTAUT2 with its core determinants and its moderators. Now that we've explored the ins and outs of UTAUT and UTAUT2, let's talk about some of its strengths and weaknesses. Simply put, one of its greatest strengths is in its unified nature. It is in one of the most comprehensive technology acceptance models that builds on earlier frameworks like TAM and adds more nuance and variables. UTAUT2 similarly expands on the original UTAUT, and both models are specifically designed for technological change. While UTAUT has some clear strengths, it has had criticism addressed its way, some of which played a role in the development of UTAUT2. UTAUT has been portrayed as being too focused on formal learning, too concerned with the organization at the expense of the individual, and not always designed with educators in mind. Although the UTAUT model has been widely adopted, doubts exist over its capability to explain individuals' technology acceptance. In fact, that is one of the more consistent criticisms of the framework. Venkatesh and other researchers have attempted to address that criticism by adding determinants and moderators to UTAUT2. Hopefully I've introduced some of the basic concepts in the United Theory of Adoption and Use of Technology, otherwise known as UTAUT and UTAUT2. This list of readings helped to inform my views on the subject and could be useful to you as well.